Hello and welcome to the Thursday, July 11th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a diary by Jesse about using a DB scan in order to analyze honeypot data. Let's first uh, introduce a DB scan for those not familiar with it. It stands for density based spatial clustering of applications with noise. And the tool itself is really sort of tailor made for log analysis. It's able to identify clusters of similar logs, but also identify outliers. And that of course is is often what you're interested in. So for example, if you're looking at commands that attackers are calmly executing, many of them are changing the password by piping data to the password command. The commands are very similar. Of course, there are different passwords and different usernames, but that would be one of those clusters where you have a number of very similar commands. Jesse explains how to use the tool, what some of the pitfalls are, how you may get some bad results from the tool, and essentially how to use it effectively in order to analyze your honeypot logs. Of course, the same easily then transfers to any kind of log that you would like to analyze and identify outliers. And then we have a second vulnerability in OpenSSH. When I saw it first, I thought, well, it's uh, just the old regression vulnerability that we had last week. This vulnerability is very similar. The difference is that it does affect the privilege separated process in OpenSSH. The vulnerability has been identified using Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, but uh, there is really nothing that would make this particular version of OpenSSH so special that this, this version of the vulnerability doesn't show up in other distributions as well. With only affecting the privilege separated process, the impact is lower of this vulnerability. Exploitability is similar and uh, still tricky. So nothing to be too worried about, but uh, be ready for additional OpenSSH patches. Then we have exploits that are taking advantage of vulnerabilities that Microsoft patched yesterday. The first one is for the Windows MS HTML platform spoofing vulnerability. That particular vulnerability was already exploited according to Microsoft and we now got additional details from Checkpoint. Checkpoint states that this vulnerability has actually been exploited for over a year now in targeted attacks and it's sort of as I mentioned yesterday, one of those uh, typical vulnerabilities where the user is tricked into opening a malicious file and the user interface is not really properly reflecting what's happening here. It all starts with a .url file, but this particular file can be made to look like a PDF. If the user is then clicking on the file, it actually opens Internet Explorer, even though Internet Explorer is, well, uh, kind of being phased out. It's still part of the operating system. And then a malicious .hta, an HTML application, can be launched by the victim. This all looks like PDFs to the user, so the user never really gets sort of an obvious warning that uh, they're dealing with uh, some executable uh, code here, and that's really sort of the nature of this vulnerability. And we also got exploits for three SharePoint vulnerabilities. Haven't had a chance to look at them in detail. They don't look malicious, but what was published here was just the exploit, no additional uh, details. So have to read the exploit in detail to figure out how the, ex the vulnerability exactly works. And the usual disclaimer, be careful as you're executing code like this. We also got some new vulnerabilities to talk about. Citrix released an update to a Netscaler. This particular update fixes two vulnerabilities, one of them considered critical, and it's a sensitive information disclosure. Not exactly what information is being disclosed, but the CVSS score of 9.4 does make that critical. There's also no authentication required to exploit this vulnerability. 
And we got updates for OpenVPN. This in particular affects the Windows version of OpenVPN and the vulnerabilities addressed here would allow the loading of malicious plugins. But of course, they would have to be first placed in the right location on the particular system. And in order to do so, an attacker would already have to be the OpenVPN administrator. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.